CJ here, your favorite scuba diver with Deep South Divers. You read that right, we're underwater chainsawing today. This is in a lagoon adjacent to Rainbow River in North Florida. The water is absolutely beautifully clear. This is a piling left over from the mine from the mining operation that occurred in the 1890s. You can see here that is actually a piece of railway, a piece of steel rail that sat on top of these pilings. And it is stuck in the mud. We've got new cut resistant gloves. They are stainless steel mesh gloves, but they're stretchy. So you still get a lot of tactile feel through them. They're awesome. That noise you hear is the boat shifting from forward to reverse. It's very loud underwater. Lots of fish in this lagoon. They're curious, they come over and say hi, and <laughs> you can run them off pretty easily. All right, I like what I see, it's time to cut. All right, saw in hand. That's a hydraulic power pack that's sitting on the boat. It sends hydraulic fluid down to the saw, and that's what spins the blades. That's how we get an underwater chainsaw. Let's move this line and make sure that uh, it's not in the way. We don't cut it by accident. We can make a mess out of that visibility pretty quick with the silt and sediment on the bottom. What an awesome tool, it just eats that thing for lunch. Boom, down it goes. Let's move the saw over here to this next piling. Can't really see what we're cutting this time, just gotta feel it. You can hear that fall. See you tomorrow. CJ here, your favorite scuba diver with Deep South Divers. We are cutting filings down underwater. Look at that. Let's hit it again. This one with some visibility. Look at that. You can actually see it. When I'm pulling the saw around, I'm pulling a boat with it. So it takes quite a bit of effort. You can see the saw just destroys the visibility. And down it goes. That right there is Obi-Wan Jason. He is an instructor in Beaufort, South Carolina. He owns the shop. He says, do that one which is great because the saw makes such a mess I can't really see where my next piling is so uh, he and Captain are hovering above me and they watch me and I look up to them and they point out the next piling this is what basically my view is nothing but silt let's cut that one deep and low I'm actually in the mud a little bit with the saw. <clears throat> Jason again. He says, hey, hey, hey. He says, hey, look. Hey, uh, look at me. That one, then that one. He says, okay, that one, that one, okay? I say, yeah, that one. He says, okay, good. Bye. And he's going to go find the next piling. I thought that this one might uh, actually float. We did have one that floated, but 83 of the 84 pilings sank. 
And that when the top of it sank, see I was trying to make it smaller so that when one floated, it uh, wouldn't be a problem to manhandle. That one sank. Let's cut it again. Up, oh, sinker. I cut it low in the mud. See you tomorrow. CJ, your favorite scuba diver with Deep South Divers. We are cutting down pilings today. These pilings are about 120 years old. They're from a mining operation uh, in North Florida. This is an old phosphate pit. And um, Rainbow River has actually started to flow into the, the phosphate pit and created a gorgeous lagoon. Obi-Wan Jason there, I say, hey, this light in my face. He says, it's okay. <laughs> Hit that one over there. All right. Well, I'll pull the saw over there and the boat. This is that one. So I'm going to come over here. Captain is... Uh, He's hovering above it, marking the spot. I'm gonna yank the saw over and connect it to the other end of that hose is a, uh, is a boat. So I'm pulling quite a bit. Cut these pilings down and let the boys uh, bury them in the sediment. Very powerful feeling pushing that thing over. I say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> there we go. Let's hit this one. I can tell which one to hit. I, I'm I'm buried in the silt sediment. I can't really see much because the saw makes a mess out of everything. But, but the boys point me to the to the next one. So as soon as one falls over, I'm looking for my divers. Cut, 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 boom. Yeah, boy. Next one. This one right here, he says. What an awesome tool. Got about 13 horsepower in a uh, tool that weighs about a pound and a half underwater. <clears throat> it's a very powerful feeling. I look up, he says, there you go over there. I say, all right, keep it coming. We each took turns with the saw. Each of us took turns running the boat. Each of us took turns uh, guiding the diver. See, I'm struggling with that, uh, with pulling the boat around. And I, every once in a while, I look up to make sure that I'm cutting on the on the side of the piling that's going to open up as it falls. I don't want to pinch the saw. goes and of course Viz goes to nothing. Pull my uh, saw out of the uh, out of the mud there. Shake it off. See you tomorrow. CJ here, your favorite scuba diver. Uh, I've been uh, bombed by a dragonfly that happens to be exactly the same colors as my gloves. And when I touch him, he just kind of pulls away.
underwater we've got some awesome life that is about a 14 inch oh i don't know what that is a bass yellowtail who knows he doesn't like my bubbles he kind of takes off but you can see there in between the logs in between the pilings two turtles one of them skates out of there early he says man i don't know what that thing is with light on his head but the other one just kind of hangs out he's like i'm not really here i'm not really here all right i'm taking off and you can see him actually poop <laughs> as he takes off the light does awesome things. You can see it reflecting on the backs of my hands there. Just awesome stuff. See this piling right here? It doesn't even break the surface. It's about two and a half feet underwater and uh, caused a lot of issues with passing boats. A lot of damage, which is why we're taking them down. And here we've got Jason, AKA Obi, uh, operating a saw. He's already made a complete mess out of everything without even operating the saw yet normal. And there he goes. Yeah, as soon as you stick the uh, saw down into the um, into the muck and mire, it just goes to nothing. This right here is Captain. He gets his chance with the saw. Of course, it makes a disaster out of the visibility. But I wanted some good shots of the boys operating the saw. I never did get one with Ninja. This is actually day two. Ninja is topside. He's operating the boat and the uh, hydraulic power pack, which of course runs the saw. And he has filled his piling right there. Boom, over it goes. He's like, I'm getting out of the way. He's looking at me for direction, so I point him to the next one. Visibility is so bad, it's very difficult for the cutting diver to know where to go next. He's going to go right down in that silt and sediment. That silt and sediment we estimate to be uh, at the deepest point is probably 40 feet thick. The entire lagoon is about 20 feet deep and uh, we understand the mining operation had a maximum depth of about 65 feet. So uh, yeah, 40, 45 feet of silt on top of limestone. These pilings go all the way through the silt into the uh, into the limestone. And we'll cut them down to make sure that passing boats don't get speared. I'll give Captain a little bit of a push here. making sure that it doesn't fall down on them. Of course, they're tremendously heavy, but underwater they don't weigh nearly as much. We'll see you tomorrow. CJ, your favorite scuba diver here with Deep South Divers. I've got Captain with me. We're going to go do a final inspection, check out our work. <clears throat> this is the bottom. You can see a turtle there. He sees us and takes off. Captain and I are cruising along where we know the pilings were. There's one. Yep, there's one that actually stayed on top of the silt. Most of them actually buried themselves in the silt and sediment ones that uh, laid down on their side kind of stayed partially upright. This right here is a, uh, those are two rails, <coughs> two steel rails where a uh, cart was pushed. The cart ran along those uh, steel rails. It's kind of an interesting uh, historic perspective. We tried to remove them but uh, decided that after all the, uh, the history of them is very cool something we probably want to keep so long as they're safe and I say hey captain you're making a mess out of the bottom dude look at that and he says oh sorry I said hey get your fins up he says okay cool there you go cool man thank you 
our inspection is performed largely visually and so we need Viz to be able to uh, see what we're doing. You can see the cross section of the railway there. And I say to him, let's find out how far it is from that from the top of that rail to the water, to the water line. <clears throat> now the water at the moment is a little bit low. But we need at least uh, uh, six or eight feet is a is a good safe mark. Here's another one. This actually appears to be a little closer to the surface. So let's see how far we are here. If there's any distance or any fear of a passing boat hitting that, I happen to know that since I'm six feet tall with my fin tips, they add about two feet. So I got about eight feet between. Um, you know, my body is eight feet long with the fins. So we measure about 10 feet from the top of that rail to the water, to the top of the water. And it only gets deeper with uh, during the wet season. He says, what about the other, um, what about the other thing there? And uh, I say, hey, that's cool. And that's it. Thanks for watching the video. See you on our next big job.